Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to this uh, inaugural episode of Valiverse Declassified. Uh, this is episode one of the series and hopefully you guys dig it so much that we can continue doing this. I think this is going to be really fun for you guys, the fans, me, um, just to be able to get this information out to you, answer your questions, you know, because as I've always done, I want you guys to be a part of this. So that's why I wanted to set this up so that you guys have an opportunity to ask your questions and I can dedicate uh, shows to just answering those questions to make sure you guys are getting all the information that you guys are asking for. So a lot of great questions came in. Uh, it's been really awesome. I can't wait to get into your questions and the cool answers that I have for you. This is gonna be really fun. So without further ado, let's kind of get on into it. Uh, now. Before I get into the actual questions, I want to start with an amazing comment that we did get on the post for Valiverse Declassified, and it is from none other than Bob Breakin. Now, for those of you that don't know, Bob Breakin is the original designer and creator of Action Force when it was over in Palatoy in the 80s. Uh, it's his designs and concepts that brought Action Force to life, and he has been an amazing supporter of what I'm doing uh, with the current Valiverse Action Force. So when I get comments from Bob, uh, they're very meaningful and the one he sent today or yesterday uh, is very important and I can't wait to kind of share it with you guys if you haven't seen it on the post. It says, I love what Bobby Valla has done with his version of Action Force, but he is the recreator of Action Force. I love the figures and storyline and his vision for how the original Action Force should move forward is brilliant. That comment uh, means so much to me because to get you know the buy-off from the original creator and designer of the Palatoy Action Force to say that he approves of what I'm doing and the direction I'm taking the line means so much to me. And you know I know a lot of people you know love the original Action Force, but the guy that created that original Action Force is saying that this is the continuation of Action Force. So. Again, thank you, Bob, for that that amazing comment. Uh, definitely means a lot. I might hang that one uh, in my office, um, but thank you, sir. You are a, a truly awesome person, amazing designer. Uh, it's great to actually be able to talk to you and you know send this stuff to you. So, thank you, Bob. So now let me get into your questions and comments. Let's see. So this was a, a general one for the UK fan base. Uh, they asked about the distribution for future comic releases, uh, for future releases of the comics. I know that on Valiverse.com we do not offer international shipping uh, currently. However, I know that you guys want the comics and new issues of the comics are coming. Issue 6 will be here in a few weeks. Issue 7 and 8 are being finished up right now. So I know that you guys are going to want that story, and I know that we do offer them digitally uh, through Amazon. When you go to Valiverse.com, that is in the comments section, there is a tab for digital versions of the comics. But there is nothing like holding a physical copy, and I understand that. So I'm going to get with my web guy, and we're going to look at making the comics available international. Uh, you know, So that you guys all around the world will be able to get the Action Force comics. So... Stay tuned on that. Hopefully we'll get it ironed out by the time issue six comes, but I'll make sure that a post goes out and, and even you know a newsletter letting you guys know that uh, international shipping will be available for the comic. So stay tuned on that one. Let's see. Uh, animal packs in the works. Uh, nothing right now. Um, you know, I, it is cool when you see, you know, uh, some of the, you know, the Army, the Special Forces bring, you know, the canine unit in there. Uh, I like seeing them do their drop jumps with the canines kind of attached to them. It might be cool to eventually do something. Uh, I have a couple pit bulls, so I wouldn't mind doing, uh, you know, a pit bull on the line. 
but uh, there's nothing on the radar yet for, for animals, but we'll see. If something arises and I'm like, you know what, this, this character needs an animal, I'm more than happy to put it in there, but as of right now, nothing works. Uh, series 3 pre-order info. Uh, still working on that. Um, not sure the timing yet. Uh, I gotta make sure that I get that information from the factory on when they're gonna need their quantities and that sort of thing, and that will judge on when I put up Series 3 for pre-orders. But uh, it's good that you guys are asking for that because I know that you guys want Series 3. So let's get Series 2 here very sh very soon. And then um, maybe something a little before Joe Fest or maybe at Joe Fest uh, regarding Series 3 pre-orders. But you guys will see it when it goes up on the uh, on the social media pages. They're also It'll also be in the newsletter. Don't worry, you guys won't miss that. Let's see. Favorite car, favorite sports team, favorite color, mom's maiden name, and social security number. Let's see. Favorite car, uh, let's see, I drive a Tacoma. Uh, I love pickups, but if I had to go favorite classic car, probably either um, an 87 Grand National or a 67 Chevelle, but I would like to upgrade my Tacoma to a Tundra. Favorite sports team, uh, New York Rangers. I am a huge hockey fan. I play and I grew up a Rangers fan. Favorite color is green. Uh, mom's maiden name, well, you can ask her that. And social security number. My social security number is 1234 go. Let's see. Uh, will you be reissuing the physical copies of the comics or will they be released as a collected graphic novel? As of right now, there are no plans to reissue the physical copies, but we are working on putting together um, uh, trade paperbacks. So once issues 6, 7, and 8 come out, we'll have 8 issues of Mission Files. And we are currently working on uh, the first issue of the ongoing series after Mission Files. So what we might do is take the 8 issues of Mission Files and breaking up into 2 4 issue trade paperbacks. But we are working on that, and news about that will come you know, in the next few months, hopefully. Will the Swarm Troopers be released down the road in different colors since the original is sold out? Uh, we are looking at re-releasing the Swarm Trooper for late summer, because I know that that one was a big seller, and you guys love troop builders, and the Swarm is very cool. So that figure will get a re-release, but different colors, uh, I may have something I'm working on, so we'll see. Any plans to eventually expand the Valiverse toy line to other genres like fantasy, sci-fi, etc.? Yes, I have lots of other ideas I want to do for figure lines and stories. Uh, I'm also looking at some other licenses that I would like to put under the Valiverse banner. So nothing I can talk about yet, but yes, this company is not just about doing Action Force, although Action Force is the flagship line, it's not going to be the only line. Since the release of the figures, what has surprised you the most? Um, I think how how quickly this all caught fire. You know, I planned on ordering X amount of extra quantity for after the pre-orders were uh, fulfilled and then putting the extra quantity up on the site. I didn't expect it to sell out as quickly as, as it did. I thought that it would be a slow burn, but it was like the line came out and you guys loved it all so much. and. You know, reviewers were reviewing this stuff and loving it. Fans were taking pictures and people were just like, I want Action Force. And we sold out of Series 1 so quickly. And, you know, I put, you know, a few cases up on, on restock that sold out in minutes. And that is incredibly surprising to see how, like, how popular the line has gotten in, in such a short period of time from once the product came out. I know that we were working on Action Force for a long time during the pandemic and that sort of thing. And then when it finally kind of hit people's hands, it, it was just like pouring gasoline on fire. So that that has been very surprising. And I, I can't, uh, I'm so happy. I can't be a, a more thankful to you guys for loving this line and making it as popular as it is. Uh, so thank you for that. Is collecting at an all-time high in popularity? Did a pandemic actually help increase collecting by driving people to stay at home more and to spend money on entertainment? Uh, collecting is definitely at an, at an all-time high. I think there are a lot of... Uh, I talk to a lot of my friends and we, we talk about what is the cause of all this. Like, why are G.I. Joe prices, you know, three, four times what they were three years ago? And 
I think a, a lot of factors were, you know, the Netflix show, The Toys That Made Us. I think people were watching that who had the stuff back when they were kids and then didn't collect anymore, but then felt nostalgic and went back and wanted to go buy that stuff. So I think there was, you know, a growing need for that. I think, uh, you know, G.I. Joe specifically, with there being a lack of stuff in the marketplace before classified, people were just trying to, you know, fill in gaps in their in their collection. So that drove up the vintage price. But also vintage stuff in general, you know, even small lines are, are catching fire and really expensive. And I'll go and look at something and say, oh, I should collect that line because that should be an easy line to get. It's not, you know, there's, there are some lines, you know, that I think Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves and Dick Tracy are probably the two of the cheapest lines to collect, but something like in the Dick Tracy line, the blank figure, which was a Canadian exclusive that I had an opportunity to get it when it was 400 bucks. And that was four years ago. That figure now goes for $2,000. So I don't know what is really driving that, but all vintage lines are going up. Um, the pandemic helped in the sense that people were getting a lot of free money when, it, when the pandemic started, but I've also noticed now it's starting to revert a little bit. Now that people aren't getting that, that supplemental income, people are starting to sell stuff. Some toy groups I'm in, I've noticed people kind of offloading their, their collections because they're just like, it's too expensive, or the secondary market is so high for some of this stuff, they're like, well, I might as well just make money on it. So. There's also a lot out there. Look at all the toy lines. There's Legends, there's Classified, there's Star Wars Black Series, there's Mezco, there's Hot Toys, there's Action Force, there's, you know, e everything. There's so many lines and not, a, you know, there's only a finite amount of, of money to go around. So I think you'll see collectors start to pick and choose a little bit more on what they do collect. Um, but it is it is definitely at an all-time high. I actually thought the collecting wave would would have crashed by now, but it's still going very, very strong. And I hope it continues to, to go as, as strong as it is because, you know, it just gets more out there to you guys, you know, more lines like what I'm doing, uh, you know, are, are going to come out more action force product, more people doing toy lines, more licenses coming out, that sort of thing. So it's definitely a great time for collecting. Um, so just enjoy it now and, you know, keep going with it. All right. Will Action Force ever hit retail stores? Yes, uh, that is a guarantee it will hit retail stores. Uh, I'm already having those conversations right now with retail stores and uh, that sort of stuff is definitely in the works. I can't really share too much more about it because we're still just having these conversations, but it is being recognized by retailers and other companies how popular this line has gotten as quickly as it has, especially with the movie in the works. Uh, so they want to get on the Action Force train. So yes, you'll definitely see Action Force in retail. What was the toughest hurdle slash situation you guys had to go through and or overcome since production and release of the Action Force figures uh, were during this pandemic? I think just the overall like dealing with uh, the production delays during the pandemic, you know, I remember I gave all of my files and hard copies and paint masters to the factory in December of 2019. And then you all know the pandemic hit China early. It hit early in 2020 and then us around February, March. So to be able to, to you know, I had everything planned to make sure that we hit a year schedule, everything was ready. And then it's like I handed it all over and then the pandemic started. So it was kind of out of our hands at that point. So the factory, I think, shut down for six months, six or seven months. And then when they came back, they were only at a small percentage of workforce. So things were very slow for 2020. And then even into 2021, there were still residual effects of, of the pandemic. So navigating that, you know, making sure that you guys were in, in the loop, making sure that I kept Action Force content coming, even when you guys were waiting for the figures. Um, it was definitely a, an uphill battle, but look at it now. We got through it. Series one is here. Series two is almost here. Wait till some news about that comes out in the next few days. And, you know, it's it's kind of, it's in the past now. Granted, the, the pandemic is still affecting a lot of issues around the world. But at the end of the day, we got over the hump with series one. It's here. We're still moving forward. I'm taking all the measures that I need to to make sure that 
action force continues to come out consistently you know so looking at, at other factories working with other factories for series three to make sure that we can keep getting product out as, as quickly as possible because that's that's what i want to do you know i want to make sure that the weight that you guys had for series one is paid forward with the continuation of product coming out all right um let's see are there going to be any kind of sticker decal packs? Um, nothing I've thought about at, at this moment. I know there are some uh, some guys out there on Facebook that do you know water slides and that sort of thing. But um, maybe if there's enough need for it, um, you know, it's not it's not something I've got a lot of a lot of ask for. But it may be something where maybe down the road we put it in with you know some of the basic troopers uh, or gear packs. But um, we'll see. I never say no to anything, but if it's something that the fans want enough, I will definitely listen and put it in line. Will you bring in an original Palatoy Action Force figure to Valiver's Action Force? After all, original Palatoy Action Force was truly international, so it would be sure it would surely be easy to have one turn up and call in a few mates to help the, the situation in the continental U.S. Well, if you follow the story, you will know that. Condor, I thought I had Condor here. Condor is a British SAS operative who was over in the United States as a liaison. So we, we tell that in the story, if you weren't familiar with that. So he is a direct kind of callback to the original Palatoy line that had the SAS uh, team. So, you know, Condor is that, that almost like that homage to the original action force. Uh, there's little things that I sprinkle in here and there. I don't want to do, you know, direct reissues of original Palatoy stuff, even though I love the original Palatoy stuff, but I want the Valiverse Action Force to be its own thing, to be something new and fresh, so I'm creating new characters and new stories, but anytime I can do that little bit of nostalgia, salt and pepper, um, you know, you'll see that, that throughout the line. Will Action Force comics be collected into a graphic novel format in the future? I touched on that, that, uh, that question earlier. Yes, we are looking at, um, uh, trade paperbacks for the Mission Files series. How deep is your list of new characters coming to the line that we don't know about yet? What is... Okay, let me touch on that first. Uh, very deep. Uh, I'm working on series four and five right now. Um, maybe at Joe Fest you might see some of that, but, you know, I can't give too much away. What is one thing you found most disappointing about the rollout of Wave 1, and what was one of your biggest joys from Wave 1? Uh, the most disappointing thing was, uh, I think, the the amount of extra quantity we had. You know, I had planned for um, almost about a thousand of every item extra, and it sold out. You know, the first uh, quantities that went up on on the site sold out in about a week and a half, and then I had a few extra cases that went up, and they sold out in like two minutes. So looking back on it now, I think, uh, you know. It would have been great to have ordered maybe two or three thousand of extra of, of every figure, but you know, you you it's kind of one of those things where you don't know, and you know when you're dealing with quantities and the speculation of what's going to sell, it's it's kind of a gamble. But now that we know, now we were able to plan better for series two, and we'll plan even better for series three because also the line is growing in popularity, so it's bringing on more uh, more new customers. Like I've seen. A substantial amount of growth in new customers from series one to the pre-orders for series two and then we'll see that as the series two quantities go back up on the site and then when series three comes along so it's an ever-growing line and uh, you know we're gonna try to make sure we stay ahead of ordering the right quantities because I think the as collectors the last thing we want is for things to sell out and miss miss out on things and have to pay secondary market prices which is why I'm going to offer the Swarm and Steel Brigade again as reissues in the late summer. So I'm talking with the factory now about those quantities and timing for when we can get those figures out. They'll almost be like a supplemental Series 2 reissue, uh, but more news will come out for that. And then what was one of the biggest joys? I think what I said earlier about the popularity of the line. Uh, it, it's been crazy. The companies that have contacted me, the, the celebrities that have contacted me, people like Bob Breakin, the original creator and designer of Action Force, you know, uh, getting in touch with me and me talking to him on a regular basis about what I'm doing, like that kind of stuff is awesome. I, I you know, I, I just think that 
you know, when you do something like this, it's it's all kind of a gamble. It's like, you know, I put a lot of my own money into this line to start it out. You know, the first Kickstarter uh, didn't fund, but then the second one did. And then we had the pandemic. And now to see what the line has become, it's like, when you see it, all the hard work pay off, I, that's a really, real, a real rewarding part, especially for me. So, um, yeah, I, I couldn't be happier with, with how it's turned out. So those are some of my joys from Series 1. Uh, how much did the finalization of the production bodies change direction of the character designs? Uh, nothing really changed. Everything kind of stayed the same from when I had started. Uh, I know very, very early on, I think in the first uh, Kickstarter, I... I put in a because um, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of butterfly joints just because for the aesthetics, but they are a very functional joint if they're done the right way, and to you know to hold in a combat grip you need butterfly joints. So I reached out to the fan base and people said yes we want butterfly joints. So that was a very early change, but as far as like during production we really didn't change much. I'm trying to think now. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. I mean, you know, things as, as far as like uh, material hardness and softness. So I know on series one, um, there, there are some areas of tight joints because some of the, the plastic is a little harder than say what what Legends does because they they have to hit um, a different safety aspect. So they have to do things in a lot softer plastics. So that's why their their figures are a little more pliable. Uh, I wanted a more higher quality figure, so we went with a harder plastic for the PVC, but you know, things like the, the foot pegs are a little hard to get on the stand, so Series 2, we fixed that. You know, things like the vest, we're, we're, we're working on fixing that. So it, it's little things like that, that that change, but overall, nothing major changed as far as the bodies and the designs. Will you make any Action Force vehicles such as a Jeep or a tank in the future? Uh, I am currently working on designing Action Force vehicles. So, again, maybe at Joe Fest, I'll show some of that progress. How has the success of the Action Force line prepared you for ideas for the next few waves of figures? Um, I think things like seeing, you know, you know, you try to figure out like, okay, what are going to be the top sellers? Steel Brigade, Swarm, the Troop Builders are always going to be the top sellers, things like Sarge because of, of, of his, his presence. But then, you know, I was telling everyone that, you know, Carrick was going to be like the sleeper character in the storyline. And I've noticed that Carrick has become probably one of the most popular characters in the line. So, you know, when I'm, when I'm planning, you try to add into each series a mix of troop builders and core characters. So I think in series two, we have Rollout, Sarge, Tim Kennedy, and the Scarabs. So, you know, Tim Kennedy, another one, big presence. Sarge, big presence. Rollout was a character I wanted in series one, but got pushed to series two. The Scarabs are that, that extra swarm troop builder that I think are going to be just as popular as the original swarm trooper. So, you know... Figuring out that balance of core characters and troop builders is is kind of uh, an ever learning process. So that that's kind of you know what I've learned as 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 the line goes on. Uh, let's see, uh, just a few more here. And the new in the near future, are you going to release series one so people who missed out will be able to get them? It would give everyone an opportunity to troop build. So again, I I, I mentioned that uh, just a few questions ago. We are looking at reissuing the Swarm and Steel Brigade uh, again. So the same Series 1 versions, but I think I'm going to put them in the Series 2 packaging because they'll be like what you call carry forwards. Carry forwards are when you're doing the case packs, especially when they go to retail. Say you do uh, Series 1 has X case packs and then Series 2, but then if you need, if you have less uh, figures in Series 2, you take some supplemental figures from Series 1 and you call those carry forwards because it's just carrying forward that product into another waiver series. So that's what we're going to do for the Swarm and the Steel Brigade. So again, I'm talking with the factory right now about timing for when we can get additional quantities of Steel Brigade and Swarm out to you. But more news on that will come as soon as I get it from them. What would your figures look like if you could cha charge around $100 US dollars? Would you improve the material used, more paint apps, more accessories, more detail overall? I think you would. I would want to do something sort of like what Mezco does. I love Mezco products. It's one of my favorite current toy lines. They are on in that, that $100 range, but the, the quality you get from Mezco is amazing. Their detail and their soft goods is fantastic. Their weapons are awesome. I always look at a lot of the way they do their weapons to model some of mine because they're like the gold standard. So I want to make sure that 
we're getting our quality as close to what Mezco is doing because it's perfect. Uh, you know, I think you'd see probably maybe some a bunch of soft goods, uh, definitely a lot more paint apps at, at that hundred dollar price point. We'll see. I mean, if uh, I listen, it would be a dream come true if if uh, I could partner with Mezco and offer that version of the Action Force characters with that soft goods and that that high that higher price point. But maybe that's something that we explore later on. Maybe once we got a few series under our belts, then we look at maybe a higher price point figure. Uh, you know, almost like an ultimate edition of, of that figure. So something to, something to keep in mind. Um, I know that Mezco, what Mezco does is very popular. So I know that the the want is there, but we'll see. We'll see as the, as the line grows and evolves. Uh, could we get small tactical backpacks in future waves gear packs? Um, I gave you a small, medium, and large backpack and a, a shoulder bag. So I'm not sure exactly what how small you want. Uh, could we get a M1A Magpul or an M14 EBR? I have a list of tons of weapons that I want to get into the line. Could we get an MP7 without a silencer with a stock and a foregrip? Again, I have tons of weapons I'm looking to get out. I want to get other models out before I go back and revisit uh, other versions of the weapons that I already put out. Would you consider adding more expressive heads, talking, yelling, and more hand options, pointing, splay fingers, relaxed hands to future waves? It would give us so many more options setting up a scene. As a toy photographer, I ponder these things. Yes. I know a lot of people ask for hand packs, but uh, I do want to give more hand options. So I'm, I'm looking into that for series uh, four and five. Uh, I know my good buddy Sal from Two Cents Toys. He recently showed me the J. Jonah Jameson figure from the... Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home series and he has like flat hands like this which are meant to be put on a desk but Sal made a good point where you could make someone like this as if they're you know they're getting shot at or protecting themselves and I think hands are very expressive uh, for for any characters that you use. so I want to look into more hands for the characters for sure um, there's also ones that you know smaller smaller weapons smaller blades if you had a hand that was already holding that 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 weapon uh, if it was molded that way, I think that that's a good option. The expressive heads, I definitely want to do more of. I know that for Carrick, when we first did him, he just had a regular face, you know, closed mouth. And I said, you know what, he needs a, an angrier face. And we ended up re-sculpting his head to the more angry face, and it came out great. So I definitely want to do more of that uh, in the future. I know, like, Pandora has, like, a half smile, but I think we could push that, that sort of stuff even further. So, um, you know, if, if it's... If it fits the character, we'll definitely do it. But it's, it's not its not something that I'm saying no to. I'm, it's something that we're definitely looking into. Let's see. Condor was released in Brazil by the Estrella Toy Company in 1986. The same figure was also released in Argentina, but with different accessories. Both used what appeared to be G.I. Joe, a real American hero, airborne three and three quarter inch mold. Was this the inspiration for Action Force Condor? No, it wasn't. The inspiration for Action Force Condor was the original Palatoy uh, SAS, uh, the, uh, I'm looking at him right now, the SAS squad leader. He does have a, a, a balaclava face um, on, but I wanted, you know, a character that you saw his face, but we, he does come with the balaclava head. So the original Kickstarter had uh, Condor in all black, which matched closer to the original Palatoy figure. And I know some people have asked for that version of Condor. You can make him by uh, using the Special Ops Trooper. But maybe one day down the line, I'll I'll do the original version of Condor with that, that color vest and gear. And that's more of a true throwback to the original Palatoy line. What is your what is one thing you found most disappointing about the rollout of Wave 1? Oh, okay, we already asked, uh, answered that question. Um, and then our last question is... What are some of the items on your wish list or stretch goals for the brand? Uh, I think a wish list thing is vehicles. I know I, I you know, it's, it's sort of, it's become a ribbing by you guys uh, to ask about vehicles, but vehicles is important. I think at this scale, at the, the, the one six scale or the, the one twelfth scale, it's vehicles have been hard to do. I know, you know, black series has done some that weren't as successful, and then they did some that are really successful. I have the Snow Speeder. I think it's an amazing vehicle. You know, that came with a, a, a pilot, and I think it was $130 or $120. And there are other companies doing big vehicles that are in the four dollars $500 range, which I think are, are way overpriced. I think 
it's a matter of finding that sweet spot for vehicles. What are you guys willing to pay? And what is a compelling enough vehicle to get for that price point? So it's it's definitely a battle I, I want to fight and, and almost also a puzzle to solve. So that's definitely on my list. Um, I want to do, I just want to do, do more things. I'd, li I'd like to do a, a ghillie suit in the line. I know people have been asking for like halo jumpers. Um, someone asked me about a parachute. I'm like, parachute, interesting. Um, you know, there, there's also all sorts of things. I just, I just want to make awesome figures. Uh, I want the story to continue. I want to bring in, you know, different, different people keep, people keep asking about what, what celebrities are going to be in the line next. And I don't, I don't know if it's going to be one of those things where celebrities in every series, but you know, there's some celebrities out there I would love to work with and love to be part of the line. So if, if it fits and it makes sense, uh, you know, I'll pursue it. Uh, but other than that, I just want to focus on creating new characters, keeping the story going, creating new content. You know, we, we have the movie in the works, which is amazing. And hopefully if all goes well, that's going to start filming at the end of this year. Um, I want to look into animation. I want to look into other, other digital offerings and that sort of thing. But you know, I want I want Action Force to just go beyond figures and, and, and comics. I want it to expand into as many realms as possible. So as long as the line stays popular and you guys love it, I can continue doing those sort of things. So, um, so yeah, that's about it for it. Um, so that was all of our questions. Great questions, guys. Thank you for all those. I think we had a, a great first episode. I'm looking forward to doing this more um you know i want to hear all the questions you guys have about action force even you know if you have questions of what i think about other toy lines or the toy industry in general i know that when i'm on uh you know the three poa podcast that i'm on on the analog toys channel every other saturday we we talk a lot about you know inside stuff about the toy industry experiences that i've had and people tend to really like that stuff they like hearing about things that aren't always talked about by some of these toy companies so I like to give you guys, you know, as much inside knowledge as possible as far as, you know, how production is done and thoughts that kind of go into making these toy lines. So anything you guys uh, want to ask, send it. Uh, if we think it's inappropriate, you know, we won't we won't touch on it. But, you know, uh, other than that, you guys ask great questions and I love, you know, giving you guys as much information as possible. So thank you guys for submitting your questions. Thank you for being awesome fans. And we will see you guys on the next episode of Valiverse Declassified.